welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie, if you are new here, Julie Xfit on Instagram. And today I'm gonna go through 10 things that I wish I knew prior to starting my fitness journey. These are 10 mistakes that I had to go through that I want you guys to learn from and not have to go through the same things. Get comfy, get a cute little Gymshark crew neck on, and get some snacks, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Side note, I will be sipping on my Starbucks pumpkin cream cold brew. The first thing that I wish I knew prior to starting my fitness journey is that unfortunately not everyone's going to support you. So when I started getting this fire under my butt to start my fitness journey, started going to the gym, eating healthy, meal prepping, my family was not at that point in their own journey. So I had to realize quickly that I had my little section of the fridge, my little section of the cabinet with my healthy foods, but there was also going to be unhealthy foods in the house because they were not doing the same thing, didn't have the same goals as I did. So when I was reaching for my Greek yogurt instead of some ice cream, the ice cream was there. The triggers were there, the, the temptations were there, and I I just had to learn to live with that get some willpower comes to having those things in the house so if you're in the same page as me or you live with someone that's not on the same journey as you that is something that I wish I knew and trying to change their lifestyle and like throw out all the bad stuff replace it with your healthy foods is not a good decision because everyone goes at their own pace the best thing to do is kind of just like add to their diet if anything hey mom instead of that white bread today do you want to try this yummy ezekiel bread that i bought from trader joe's the other day and sometimes she will say yes sometimes she will say no and that is just something that i had to learn another thing with not being supported is when it comes to family events going out with friends if you decide to opt for a sober night for example you're going to deal with some people being like what the heck why aren't you drinking and having fun with us and just kind of nicely politely explaining to them like i have goals i want to reach and binge drinking tonight is not really gonna get me there. I'm just like having that conversation and if someone's judging you for it, realizing that maybe this isn't someone that you wanna surround yourself with. Kind of pivoting your friendships and the people that you spend your time with depending on how they support you. Last thing that I will say about this is I am Italian. Do you know what that means? Every Sunday we have pasta, meatballs, desserts, cannolis, da da da, every single Sunday. When one Sunday rolls around and you decide to pack your own meal prep you're gonna get eyes and you're gonna have to deal with it and explain to aunt sally that you really love her pasta but this sunday your goals are more important to you and you're gonna eat your whatever you meal prep those are some tough conversations that i definitely had to have in the beginning and if i knew prior how to kind of word them i would definitely have been a little bit more comfortable in those scenarios so that is something that i wanted to share with you guys not everyone is going to support you just be picky of who you spend your time with who you surround yourself with Tip number two, stop changing your goals every single week. I definitely struggled with this one. One week I would be like, okay, I wanna grow this butt. Do a bulk, lift super heavy, and just like go all in with trying to grow my butt. And the next week after trying to bulk for a little while, I'd be like, I'm bloated, I don't want this anymore, I want a skinny waist, I want to be super thin, I want to do a cut. And then that week I would do a cut. And every week it was like this cycle of, I want to cut, I want to bulk, I want a butt. The number one thing I can tell you guys right now is sit down, pen and paper, write down what you want, and then come up with a strategic plan. Cut, and then grow booty, that is gonna be your process, right? So you gotta commit to the cut for at least three months, okay? Give it three months, and then once you give it that, you can transition slowly back into a bulk. Sticking to one goal for at least three months is something that I would prioritize if you are new to your fitness journey. Okay. Tip number three is don't be an active couch potato. This is definitely something I struggled with the first year in my fitness journey. I would go to the gym for like an hour a day and go hard. And then I would just sit on my butt for the rest of the day. So that one hour in the gym is definitely important, but there's 23 other hours in the day and those are also important. Making sure that you have maybe a step goal. I try to do like 10,000 steps a day and then I'm actively thinking about being more active throughout the day. So if I'm sitting on my laptop for like more than two hours, I know, hey Julie, you're at like 2,000 steps and it's 3 p.m. Let's try to go for a walk. Tip number four, we see it all over Instagram. We're all guilty of clicking these videos that say lower tummy workout, behind the arm workout, like upper abs workout, inner thigh workout. Point being, you cannot spot reduce fat. 
a million crunches will not get you apps. A bunch of tricep extensions will not give you skinny arms. This is something that I definitely struggled with in the beginning. First, like three months going to the gym, all I did was tricep extensions because I wanted thinner arms, planks because I wanted a strong core, adductor machine because I wanted a thigh gap. Didn't change my diet, didn't do any compound lifts, barely did any cardio. That's all I did because I was trying to spot reduce fat. Learning that that's not really possible. If you do want to lose fat, you're going to have to lower your calories and go into a calorie deficit and follow a structured program and the fat will come off at different times, maybe different areas. Maybe you're someone that holds a lot of fat in your stomach so you'll see that kind of shed first. For your arms, it'll come off, okay? I promise. Be structured, be patient, be consistent, and you will reach your goals, I promise. But don't spot reduce it, okay? Tip number five. Don't compare what someone else eats to what you eat full days of eating all the time for inspiration for you guys but don't copy my calories don't copy my meals exactly because you could either gain a ton of weight at my calories or lose a ton of weight at my calories everybody and every body is different and needs different energy and fuel throughout the day because you know what I'm gonna say this first. Kylie Jenner just posted a TikTok of her what I eat in a day. Girls are seeing her drink like celery juice, having an avocado toast, and like just like very clean little meals, and they're gonna wanna eat that way and try to look like her. Girl probably got a BBL. N no way is it humanly possible to eat like her and then look like her if she got plastic surgery without plastic sur surgery. You guys just need to be like realistic and not compare your food to other people and not try to see somebody's body, see what they eat and just copy it because you don't see the full picture. What if she's hitting two workouts a day? What if she is six foot two and you're five foot three? All these factors play into it. You just need to find what your maintenance calories is and then tweak it from there. Stay in your own lane. Just use those full days of eating as inspiration. Like maybe you see someone's lunch that looks yummy, so you can try that lunch and kind of tweak the macros to fit your daily intake. Do not neglect your compound movements. Squats, your bench, your deadlifts, your rows, your pull-ups, hip thrust. These are all core elements that you need to be hitting every single week if you're trying to build some muscle, see some progress, okay? So do not neglect the compounds. I know they're in an intimidating place in the gym sometimes. Bring a friend, wear a hat, tunnel vision, your headphones in, have a bomb playlist. Get into that weight room and lift heavy. And do these movements in the beginning of your workout so you can try to hit those PRs, personal records every single week okay i squat every week i hip thrust every week deadlift every week bench row all five i want to be incorporating these exercises week to week and not changing up your routine too much so focus on those compounds they are important tip number seven kind of goes along with tip number six follow a structured program When you're like scrolling through Instagram and seeing all these workouts, it's great if you want to just stay active, healthy in general, but if you have a set goal that you want to reach, you need to be following a structured program. Working with the higher standard, that is where I am an assistant coach. We always have our girls follow the same workout program for at least four weeks. As for myself, I do the same exact thing and so do the, all the other coaches. So this is super important because that is the only way you will work on progressive overload, see progress week to week, because if you're changing your workouts every single day your body's gonna be like hold on I was just getting used to that and this and that and it's just gonna be everywhere you need to be following a structured routine we're almost done okay hang in there you can miss a workout you can totally miss a workout I used to freak out if I couldn't make it to the gym one day but freak out I'd be like no I can't I can't go to that I need to go to the gym you can miss a workout okay Breathe. The gym will still be there tomorrow. If you're going on vacation, it's okay. The gym will still be there when you get home. If there's a global pandemic, the gym will still be there after, I promise. It was still there. You just might have to wear a mask. Don't stress, just be chill. Chill like a cucumber, okay? If you can't go to the gym, you can't go to the gym, you'll go tomorrow. Number nine, I was very badly under eating. And so are many women out there, men, women and men. I was eating like 1200 calories a day. 1200 calories a day. That is the amount of calories a toddler needs to eat to stay alive. 
I needed a lot more calories so I went through a strategic reverse diet to get my calories up to like double that. That is my maintenance calories now. It's a slow process, gotta be patient, but it's a necessary process to get that metabolism running. You may not be eating enough. The final tip of this video is that if you want to start your health and fitness journey, you're going to have to make some sacrifices, okay? Double cheeseburger that you like from McDonald's, you can't have that every day anymore if you want to be healthy fit, okay? Just finding alternatives and not thinking so much of taking things out of your life, but adding things in. Maybe you can make a home version of that double cheeseburger at home. It's realizing that your fitness journey takes sacrifices, but in the end, you're gonna develop this balanced, magical life that you just love living. Being able to do your day-to-day -day things with so much more ease because you're fueled properly and building muscle is so worth it. If you guys are having a hard time on your fitness journey, leave a comment down below, DM me on Instagram, and I can totally help you out. I wanna make your fitness journey like a seamless process, so I'm here to help you, okay? I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I didn't ramble too much. I'll see you in the next video. Okay.